and just so y'all know, I am not going to bore you with any PowerPoints. Um, I've been to several Autodesk events and other events, and I can't stand to sit and watch a whole bunch of PowerPoint slides. So hopefully y'all are the same way, and I'm just going to jump right into it. So we're going to go over vehicle tracking 2017. They just released a uh, 2017 service pack one for vehicle tracking. Not much difference in uh, previous versions. So first, I'm going to go over laying out a vehicle swept path. So we start by going to the vehicle tracking tab and here's all your vehicle tracking functionality. You do have settings so if you take a look at these settings there are quite a few. Uh, I really don't even mess with any of this stuff. Uh, you might go through it and find something that you might want to tweak in here. I haven't really found anything that I need to tweak. Uh, it's pretty much right out of the box, works perfectly fine. You can also see this is your swept path analysis uh, panel here. Uh, vehicle tracking also does parking lot layouts. So if you get tired of offsetting lines for parking bays and all that jazz, then use this functionality here and you can have a parking lot laid out in no time. We'll also be going over that. It also has roundabout functionality so you can lay out roundabouts and it will also generate a corridor for you automatically with signage and all that. So we'll be going over that as well. So first you start off by going to your Vehicle Library Explorer. Now there are thousands upon thousands I've got to start moving some of this stuff over so bear with me. There are thousands of different vehicles in here. Uh, one thing to keep in mind too is uh, I went to the Autodesk Technical Academy uh, about a month ago in Chicago and they were explaining to us you know this is not only for automobiles, okay? So you can think outside the box with this software. For example, we used a gurney in a hospital to see if uh, the gurney would fit through certain doors, go around certain corners, et cetera, et cetera. We also used a, uh, one of those long golf carts that you see in the airport. And we moved around inside of an airport to see if we could get around in there. Um, ships in a uh, shipyard can be used. Uh, you know, it's just, it's pretty limitless. You can add your own vehicles. Uh, I promise you right now that you better find every little tiny specification to a vehicle you can possibly get your hands on when building one in this thing because it will ask you a million questions. Uh, there are a couple of places where you can find some of these vehicles online. Uh, I've found one place, uh, it only had a handful of vehicles in it which were not really usable to me, so it's kind of useless. But it is out there. Um, this software used to be called Vehicle, let's see, what was it, Auto Track. Uh, it was developed by a company named Savoy out of the UK. Autodesk purchased it a couple of years ago and rebranded it as Vehicle Tracking. So some of the vehicles in here that you look for, for example, if you go up here and look for a garbage truck, you're not going to find it because they call them refuse vehicles. R-E-F-U-S-E. -E. Refuse or refuse, or however you want to say it. But that my friends is a garbage truck okay so keep that in mind alright 
so we're going to go down here and we're going to use US designed vehicles statewide based off Ashto and of course the US customary you get different uh, options by right clicking on this you can create new libraries um, you can copy them you can edit them you can view them so we're going to use a SU-40 in our case and you'll notice over here to the right that it shows a diagram of this truck and gives you information about it you can also look at the side of it and it'll give it the dimensions of the wheelbase and the axle spacing the overall dimension of the vehicle and such and so forth uh, there are different things you can turn on and off here if you wanted to see different things about it. You can show the turning template of this. So this is basically just the visualization of what's going on with your vehicle here. So this is the one we're going to pick. So we're going to click OK. And we're going to come up here, and you got different types. You got auto drive arc, auto drive bearing, you got 30, 40, 60, 90, 120, and up. Uh, we'll do the auto drive arc. And once you pick your vehicle and hit proceed, it asks you if you want to make this vehicle a default vehicle. Uh, basically, that would be the default next time you go up here and start this again. So I usually say no. Uh, this pops up where you can set different things. Uh, for example, if you have surfaces in here and you wanted it to go along that surface, which would be your vertical, you could do that as well. I'll just go ahead and click OK and click OK again. And the first point of this is to actually just place the vehicle in here. So you place it and you rotate it the direction you want to go. So once you get that rotation angle in there, the uh, move this over. This pops up, and just go ahead and hit proceed, and start placing your vehicle along this path here. So come up through here, make this turn, and the closer you pick, the tighter turn you can get with this. So we'll come up here, we'll make this turn, come around here like so. Now I also have the option to come up, let me get this thing straightened out here. I also have the option to come up here and hit pick an alignment. So I could pick a polyline, say this line here. And notice it snaps onto that line, so all I gotta do is just move it, you know, over here. And uh, if I pick here, and I hit pick alignment again, and I pick this one, notice it will lock onto that one as well. So I could just come down here and pick a point like so, and enter. So notice you have several types of grips along this uh, swept analysis path. Uh, here you could insert a target point. This would adjust a target point. So uh, you also can adjust that exit overturn. You know, so you can see there you can move that around. This one as well. So again, you could take this and move it around. Now, anytime you see it disappear, that means it's over the limit it's not feasible okay it's not going to happen uh, also I want you to take note that we have a red line and we have a green line the red line represents your actual tire path the green line represents the uh, body of the vehicle uh, your wheel well for example so you know if this actually came up you know past this curve here with the green line that's fine as long as the tires not coming up over it the wheel well can pass across it okay and, you know you can do little tweaks you know get it just right if you wanted to 
Uh, another thing that this thing has is uh, the option to look at this in a 3D mode and you can hit play there it will start going along your path now you can adjust your site here different ways if you wanted to look at it different different views um, if you wanted to look at it here you can also switch uh, your camera to the driver's eye path if you wanted to look at it that way you could do a fixed position the tracking path obviously lets you do this number and adjust it. Uh, you can see the wheels actually turn as well, which is kind of cool. So we'll let it get up to uh, this turn here. And we'll see how that handles that turn. It's looking pretty good. So it looks like we're good there. And that's kind of cool. You can uh, can scrub through here and go a little faster if you wanted to. Uh, you can save that viewpoint. You can also export that out as a video file and send to a client if need to. Okay. Uh, you also have a report which this will give it a report on what's going on with that. You can check different options off in here. If we go next, you can uh, check different options here. There's a ton of options in here. So I'll just go ahead and click Finish. And if you wanted to insert the profile of that, if you pick that uh, path there, there you can see you can place the profile of the vehicle in here if you're kind of doing an exhibit for someone or something. Uh, you can insert a graph. Alright. And forgot to let you, uh oh, forgot to let you guys know that uh, if you have any questions during this, go ahead and type them in, and I'll get to them at the end of the presentation. So I wanted to uh, show you a different one here. Let's go. Uh, let's go to this one. Do auto drive. This time I'll pick a uh, SU30, a little, a little bit smaller truck. And we'll start here and continue. And pick the alignment here. And I guess that's a block. Fine, I won't pick it. Um, this is actually not the one I wanted to show. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. I just passed up my street. That's what I did. All right, let's delete this. I'll try this again. This time I won't pass up my street. Here, here, pick this alignment. And we'll go ahead and pick this one. And we're going to actually back this sucker up into this bay here. see there we're still good because 
again, this red line is the tire. This would be the body of the vehicle, which would go over that. So we're good there. So if I was to animate this, oops. I'll get it to over here where it starts backing up. You can actually change this driver's eye path to, let's see, where is it? Here we go. Mirror. So now I'm looking at the mirror of the truck. So it'll show it uh, backing up like I'm looking through the rearview mirror there. So it'll show it backing into this bay. There is a way to speed this up besides grabbing that scrubbing bar. I haven't figured it out yet, but I do know it is feasible and possible to do. As you can see there, it's backing in. Looks pretty good. And it shows the other mirror there. Pretty cool. All right. So you also have a vertical clearance. Uh, what this is, um, let me open this up. And what this particular vehicle is, if I insert the profile of this, you'll see here this is um, a double pivoting tractor trailer and you'll also notice that the where is it um, there is a clearance on this thing like six inches oh here my bad minimum body ground clearance is like point one two uh, whatever that is in inches um, if we go to settings, change that to inches, yes, uh-oh, and just undo everything at this point, change that to inches. Insert. All right, cool. Still meters. That's awesome. I think I'd have to redo the path, but anyway, you get the idea. Uh, but basically, what's going to happen is, remember, we got a crown of this road here, the crown. So whenever this truck comes across and it's turning and it gets to its maximum turning point here and maximum turning point here it might drag across that crown of the road so you're getting to your lowest point here and your lowest point here uh, let's see if we can do this right vertical clearance insert this graph here first and let's see oh design check my bad so we got a severe steering here which is fine uh, okay it's been a while since I've done this part of it there it is, insert ground conflict report. 
That's what I was looking for. And yes, proceed with the default values. And there you'll see it shows us our critical areas in here of where that truck might potentially drag the ground. Okay. So if y'all uh, understand that, then great. Uh, it just basically is a graphical representation of the area in Hatch of where you might have a potential conflict in dragging on the ground there. All right. So I'll go ahead and close that. I think we'll stay in this one for now for a few minutes. But I want to go over uh, parking lot layouts. So here, got the same thing. We've got a parking explorer. We can go to US Parking Standards. I'll use the ITE guidelines. Uh, again, these can be copied and edited. Um, what you would want to do is create your own. The uh, reason I say that is because the way it puts these in, they're not the right size. Obviously, you want uh, 9 feet wide, 19 feet you know, in length for your parking bays. Uh, this shows little markings on them that you probably want. Uh, we'll, we'll get there in a second, so I'll go over that here in a second. So pick that. I'll do a new row. I'll go ahead and grab this out of here. And move this over here. And I'll go ahead and start placing this in here. I'll go ahead and put my O snaps on. We'll start here, go here, 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 and here. I hit enter. And notice it's asking me, okay, do you want them on both sides? Do you want them on this side? Or do you want them on this side? Well, we want them on this side, so I pick and it places them in there. And I can grab this, bring it up to here, and it automatically puts a curve in there for me. Okay. Also shows me the travel way that I'm going, mm -hmm. you know, in both directions. Uh, this is what I was talking about. So you can see here that it places a little T. It also puts a space here. All that can be edited. Um, after the fact. Um, these here, if you pick on them, like this uh, area here, you can drag it. Let's turn off the O snaps. You can drag it like so. So it puts those in automatically. You can also turn those off. So if we want to appear to edit, you know, you got different things that you can turn off. Your start islands, your bend islands, your end islands. Uh, if I turn off the end island, hit apply, see it turns it off. Alright. So, um, looking at that, we can add a parallel row. parallel row would go something like this. And if I wanted it on both sides, I could pick it like that. So that's a parallel row. So we got a question here from Arturo. Can you change the settings to show front and rear tires since they sometimes take different routes? Yes, you can. You sure can. I'm going to delete that one because I'm going to come up here, do a new row, and I'm just going to place one right here like so. Alright, then I could do a parallel row to that one, like so. And we'll leave it at that for now. But you can see the grips you can start using to drag like so. And we could adjust this to be like this, like that. 
and can drag this out here and just that like so so there we have a quick parking lot I could add more in here if I wanted to uh, I can take in now you've got options for left only, both, or right only. You have different service types. So you can set up these service types to be different size bays. So if you needed to change them real quickly, you could uh, set these up in the, uh, if you go to, where is it, bay style, if you click this ellipsis here, and you go into bay markings, here you can set up different types of markings, uh, your base symbols, you can set up different types of symbols for your default and the disabled. Um, what am I looking for here? Safety zones, you can number your base, you can put wheel stops, parking meters, number your curbs, put safety posts, all types of stuff. Um, you can make these um, 45 degrees. So if I apply that, notice that they change 45 degrees. I could make them 75 degrees, you know, which is a little more like that. Um, now, when you're changing them to these, um, where is it? The flow of that. You want to make sure you're doing flow or contra flow. So you can make this one flow or contra flow. All right. So we'll go change that back to 90. And I'll show you how easy it is to put uh, handicaps in here. So if we go edit the parking bay. And we pick, uh, let's say here, and we pick this one. It brings up this dialog box, and I want to make it disabled, and I want to copy it. So I just go boom, 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 and now I have disabled parking. All right, I can actually run a report on this, which will tell me that I have this amount of large cars ser using service type A. We've got 119 stalls. Six of those are disabled. So that's only 4.8% of 100% that are disabled. Okay, so it keeps track of all that. Um, let's see, what else here? Oh, we can create an access road. So if I wanted to put an access road in here, uh, you would have to select the line that defines the road. So basically, let's say I've got a line through here. Find an access road. So I'll pick that line. If you want it two way or one way, so I'll make it one way. Click OK. Notice it splits it. So now I've got a road that comes through here now and it split that for me. If we go into edit, here are all your settings. Uh, yes, there are several. So here's your service type. So here's where you would go in and you would set, okay, I want service type A to be a certain width and a certain length, certain depth, you know, all that. So that would give you the uh, the option to switch those really quickly, you know, to a, uh, a service type. So if you wanted to set those up, you know, prior to putting this in here, then all you would have to do is change the service type. All the, uh, uh, okay, so for example, if I go back in there, 
Uh, if we look at, where is it? Construction lines, you can turn those on and off. If you don't like them, uh, bay markings, you'll see here that it's using sideline T markings. I don't like those. So I can turn those off. So now you see those T markings are not there. You know, I can actually have it extend up here. Lots of different options. Uh, lay out a parking lot in a matter of minutes. I mean, it's that simple. Okay. So that will bring us to the roundabout. So let's go look at a roundabout. So again, we can come up here and select which one we want to use. So let's pick, um, yeah, we'll do rule double lane, that's fine. Works for me. Alright, so here you got existing surfaces and final surfaces that you could pick. Uh, if we click OK, you can place it, you know, anywhere you want. So once you place it, it asks to pick the legs of it. So we'll pick this one. Click OK. Pick this one. Pick OK. Pick this one. Pick OK. Now notice wherever I pick this alignment is where this leg starts. Okay, so if I pick it way up here, that's where it's going to start. Okay, see there? Uh, notice it throws in the signage for you automatically. So you got all your signage. It says here your arm to first street and it gives you information about that based off speed limit or based off speed rather. Alright. This is dynamic so if I wanted to move this around it will adjust. Okay. So you got several options for roundabouts. You can add rumble strips. You can remove rumble strips. Previous visibility region, next visibility region. You can add splitter islands. So if I come in here and pick, I can pick here for a splitter island. It's quite small, but it is still a splitter island because this is two lanes. You could put one here. You could put one here which is a little larger, and put one here. Okay. I can actually come up and remove splitter islands. I can add speed striping. I can add crosswalks. So if I wanted to add a crosswalk in here, I could come up here and pick. Uh, select the roundabout. And then I just move this sucker to where I want it. Now watch this. Once I place it, come on. I guess I didn't do it right. Hold on here. Pick. Why ain't you putting it in there? Pick. Huh. All right. Let's just put one here then sure why it's not adding it. Hmm. Usually adds it. So whenever it adds it, it actually will... Oh, I guess it added it, but it might be frozen or something. I don't know why. So I probably got a million of those in here. Oh, it's not frozen. Well, I'm not sure. I'll have to look into that. But it will place them. Okay. So if I wanted to edit this roundabout, this will bring up the dialog box here with tons of settings for this thing. Okay, and it's probably in here somewhere, 
that that sucker is turned off or something. Well, I guess that's probably why. I've got unmatching scales. I guess that has something to do with that uh, meters to inches thing I did earlier. Okay. Uh, you can come up here. This is pretty good stuff here. And go to corridor and create a corridor rather quickly. So there you will see I have a civil 3D corridor, bam, that quick. So once you have your corridor in there, you can actually build a corridor surface. And we'll use top links. So we'll add that, top links. Now we have a corridor surface. And if we go look at this, you'll see that uh, it doesn't come out quite that smooth. There's just a little bit of jaggedness in there. Not too bad to clean that up with 2017. But once you have that surface like that, you can come up here and pick your roundabout. And under general, you can change that final surface here. Oh, I'm not sure why that shows up over there. All right. So once that's done, And you come up here to place vehicles on it. We'll use, we'll start with, uh, let's use a big one. Whenever, you see how that sucker's locking on to it automatically? So once you pick, it locks on to that roundabout automatically and notice when you drive it stays locked to it okay so you could come up here like so with that you could add another one we'll just add a regular uh, regular car Passenger car. And let's say he's coming from this direction. And he needs to go around this way. that I'm getting a little bit of a lag here So I can switch different vehicles. Mm -hmm. If I wanted to animate both, I'd just select both of them and do the animation. 
that pretty much sums it up. I know it was quick, um, but you know the, it, it's real simple software to use. Very simple. Um, does anybody have any questions? If you do, please type them in there, and I'll do my best to answer them. No questions. There we go. Show us the control settings for vehicle envelopes. Envelopes. Okay. Uh, if you go here. Go to edit or copy. And advanced. Edit. Here are your settings. So you got your innermost front axle, your effective front axle offset. You can use a calculation. So that's behind or in front of the datum. That would be your primary axle or your front coupling. Uh, those couplings, what that is, is the pivot point of where the uh, trailer would fit into something. Okay. So you got your front axles, your rear axles, your steering, your body outlines, and your couplings. Okay. So you specify which type of vehicle it is and go with that. And then you just go through the wizard. Next, next. And here's your wheelbase. Here's your steering your maximum steering angle, your turning radius measured wall to wall or curb to curb, and you just keep going and hit finish. That's, that's how you do that. So road striping, ooh that's a good one. Unfortunately it doesn't do road striping. Um, that's something that I can put up there into the wet wish list uh, that's really good. Uh, that would be nice, especially with uh, doing cul-de-sacs and knuckles where you have to put all those stupid buttons in there per uh, standards. Uh, you got those uh, buttons and striping that go along there. It's pretty much a pain to uh, copy those around through there. So yeah, that's a good one. Thanks, Jay. And can you adjust the speed of the vehicle while turning? Yes, I haven't figured out how to do that yet. I have seen it done over a webinar, but I don't remember how it was done. And I would just have to get in there and, and figure it out. Ooh, that's another good one, Gary. Traffic control. Um, nope. <laughs> Plain and simple, no. Um, Basically, the only traffic control you you'll have with this is the uh, is the signage and, and calculations that the roundabout does. Uh, unfortunately, it does not lay out traffic control. Boy, that would be a good one too. Is there a list of all vehicle templates available? Actually, you can come up here to uh, uh, where is it? I found this just the other day. And now I've got to find it again. Uh, let's go. Where is it? Open library. Export the tracking data. Uh, hold on a second. Let me get into a different drawing. Because I believe there's a way to print all those out. Hmm. I'm not 
not sure what data this actually exports. Oh, I see what it does. It just exports the library out so you can bring it back into here. Um, Daniel, I will, uh, there it is, print. Print vehicle details, include unit details. You can print the turn template. Um, let's see what that looks like. Uh, I just printed it to the printer, so if you'll hang tight, I'll go look at it. Hold on. actually gave me a super nice uh, printout of the actual current vehicle that I have selected. Um, I'm not sure how you would print out the whole thing, Daniel. I can find out for you unless that does it. Let's try export. No, that's going to do that. Let's do print print the index include units print vehicle details I imagine you could do it that way if I hit print I'm pretty sure it's going to give me a huge print of uh, all the vehicles under that here so that would be quite a few pieces of paper so I don't want to I can test that for you later <laughs> Let's see. Certain vehicle paths won't allow for a hard turn on the wheel. At times, we know this will happen. It wants to slowly turn the wheel. Can you control this? Hmm. I believe you can, Brandon. Um, right here, you can increase the steering or decrease the steering angle or the articulation angles. Um, I believe you can, if I'm not mistaken. That was probably in the settings here. Uh, pass. Yeah, so you've got, uh, let's see. sure what the heck that is. Paths. Speed. So you got a forward and reverse design speed. Tracking model. Limit steering to a percentage right there. Or an angle or a radius or a turn rate. So that would be your inner wheel, outer wheel, inner body, outer body, or center line. Does that answer that, Brandon? <laughs> I don't know either, to be honest with you. Um, I'm pretty sure what you're asking is, is achievable, most definitely. Uh, if you get to that point in... Uh, on a project or something, let me know and we we can uh, figure it out together. Any more questions?
Well, if that is it, I'm going to go ahead and end this. Um, if you think of something after the fact, you know, don't hesitate to email me or call up here. Um, you customers do get free support on this. You know, I'm fairly new to it. I've only been using it I, since it came out, you know, three years ago. So I can help you the best way I can. If I can't help you, I will get you an answer somewhere, somehow, some way. Okay? So, again, thank you guys for joining, and uh, we'll see you on the next webcast. Thanks.